In this Radium mixing series, I'm gonna be taking you guys through the two microphones I use for every recording I do for vocals. Whether that's my vocals for this content I'm making right now that you're hearing, or vocals that I do for my own records or other artists' records. Seriously. I hope you guys enjoy this series. It's the Radium mixing series. Let's dive right in. The first thing I wanna take you through is the chain that I'm using right now on this TLM 103 microphone. And then I'm gonna show you guys another microphone that I use a lot of the times to get more of a record sound, more of things for or recording my own songs or other artists and why I only use two mics in my studio setup. I don't need anything else. I'm also gonna talk about the preamp. I'm gonna talk about what the interface is that I'm going into and I'm going to dive into all the plugins all the way through. So stick around and if you like it, definitely drop some love on this video. Now let's start with this microphone right here. This is the TLM 103 from Neumann. It's not Newman. <laughs> It's Neumann, all right? The reason I love this microphone on my voice is because I typically sing up in the tenor register and this microphone captures that area so nicely. There are a few issues with this microphone that I don't like. It brings out the 5K really harsh, like 5K to 10K can get really sibilant and extra harsh. So if your voice is already pretty bright or your sibilants are pretty bad, this can bring out sibilants really badly. And I'm gonna take you through my chain right here on the console in UAD and show you exactly what this microphone is going through right now that you're hearing in this content. So the first thing that I hit is the Neve 88 RS and I am going, taking this microphone directly into the Apollo X6 interface. I think this interface and these microphone preamps are all you need. You can get, you know, 3% better, 5% better, 8% better with your microphone vocal chain by upgrading your preamp, by upgrading your A to D, D to A conversion. Really, it would be D to A, or A to D, right? Because you're going analog to digital. But is that worth it? Is it worth the additional five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to get that extra five percent, that extra eight percent? For me, not really. Are you sure? I'm about workflow, so that's why I chose this microphone. I like the workflow of this microphone and my chain and being able to customize it with just the plugins. So that being said, which is a long-winded way of getting around to the fact that I love the preamp modeling on the UAD Apollo X6. And what this is doing, when you put it in the preamp area right here on the Neve 88 RS is it's modeling the actual impedance and everything else that comes on this microphone preamp for this console channel strip from Neve, okay? So you're getting the tone of this microphone preamp. And then I take this through a little bit of compression. As you can see, check, 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 check. I'm hitting maybe two to three dB of compression right here on the limiter slash compressor. And you can see my settings right here if you wanna copy them. Here's the EQ on and off. Check, 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 EQ off, EQ on. And you can see exactly what that's doing. We're boosting a little bit at the 3.5, 3.6 area. That's giving it a little bell. And then we are doing a little top shelf right around 12.5K or so. Actually, this is a bell. This is not a shelf. This would be a shelf. Check, check. That's a shelf. That's a bell at 12. 12 and a half K. That's it. It looks like the three, five area. So that's that first thing in my chain and the microphone preamp is up 40 DB. Okay. On this mic. And you can see, I just got a little, if I go like that, you could see it starting to uh, clip a little bit right here. All right, so then the next thing in my chain is the 1176. This is the Rev E. So this is just kind of a really warm, fast compressor. I did a whole plug-in mixing series last week on the 1176. If you guys want to dive into exactly what the 1176 is and why it's so fast. But you can see here, I'm getting 5 to 7 dB, and then on peaks, it's going up to even 10 dB or more, right? So check. Hey, hey. So then it'll go up to like 11 dB. And that's catching peaks and overs, etc. And and I'm going pretty fast on the attack. This is hovering around probably, I'd say 100 microseconds, maybe 200 microseconds. So the slowest attack is one and that's 800 microseconds. And the fastest is seven and that's 20 microseconds. So this is a very, very fast compressor. So it can catch all those transients, the sibilants, the plosives, things like that on the mic. And then the next up is the Poltec EQ P1A. One of the best EQs ever made in the history of mankind. And it just sounds good when you turn it on, regardless of whether you EQ or not, but I'm gonna bypass this in and out. That's bypassed out. We have no Poltec now. 
Now we have Poltec and you can hear right away, three dimension, warmer, fatter, thicker, but then also that top end, that sparkle, that nice shine on the top. And I still have kind of a little bit of a residual cold. So I have a little bit of nasal in my voice right now, but this is boosting at 12K and I'm attenuating as well at 10K. So you can actually attenuate at 20K if you wanted to. But like I said, the TLM 103 has a lot of presence in that five to 10K area. So that's why I attenuate just a little bit of that. And as I attenuate down, or if I take this down, which would be letting the 10K back up, you can hear the difference. Check, check. This is with the 10K not, not attenuated. And then here's me softening the 10K as I bring that up. If I want to over-exaggerate that, attenuate, 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 it gets really dark and muffly, right? And you can even see it on my meter right here. I lost a lot of that, right? So check, check, check. And we bring that back. And I like it right around two. And then I'm boosting six dB of 12K. And you can do that really nicely with the Poltec EQ P1A. You don't have to have the one from UAD, by the way. You can use ones from uh, Waves Audio and so many other, I think soft tubes has one that's really great. Those are ones I recommend. And then I have the bandwidth all the way up. So it's a wide bell, right? So bandwidth is your quality. It's your cue. It's whether it's tight or it's uh, wide. And this is very, very wide. This is as broad as it goes. And then here on 30 Hertz, I find that this gives you some really nice body and chest to your vocal. So 30 Hertz, I'm pushing two and a half dB and I'm attenuating two dB. To boost and attenuate on a Poltec, you're going to get a shift of the curve. So it goes from 30 hertz and it shifts it up to 60 and 120, right? It gives you more of the harmonics of 30. So taking this out, if I take the boost down and attenuate down, that's without the 30 hertz boost or attenuate. And you can hear the vocal just gets a little bit thinner. It's not as pushed out up in front of your face. And as I bring this back up, two and a half and attenuate two. Here we are back with the body and the fullness and the richness of that bottom. So that's the Pultec. And the last thing in the chain is the Neve 88RS again. And this is going to be going in line. So you can see I have the line selected. So obviously I'm giving this line level after I go through the preamp, which was on mic, right? We're on a mic, we're bringing in the mic pre, and then we go through these line level things and then we come back in through the line level on this, just so we can use a little bit of compression to catch little overs, right? You could see the, the light is just barely kind of blinking, which means we're getting maybe one to two dB of compression. Check, 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 you know, and it's just kind of holding things together a little bit more. And then a little more EQ, and the EQ here is pushing the mid range. So 1.4, that's where I find a lot of vocals to sit right in the middle. And for a VO like this for the content, 1.4 is really great. It just helps it cut and push forward on phones and everywhere else, right? And then I have actually quite a bit of attenuation. So I'm taking down right around 200, 220 somewhere around there, right? So right here. And you can see that's being attenuated by quite a bit. All right, and that's it on this one. This is just giving just a little bit of compression and just a little bit of EQ. Now let's take off the compression and EQ on this one. Check, 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 check. No compression, no EQ. And that's what we got coming out. EQ, compression on and check, check, check. And we're back. Right. So that's the TLM 103. And that's how I record everything, like literally my content. But I leave this on even when I'm tracking vocals into Logic Pro. So it's a great starting point. It's like my chain already sounds good to go. Now I can just shape things when I go to Logic Pro to actually mess with it. Now, what about the other mic? What about the mic that I use to record vocalists that are outside of what I do and my own music? You know, I can get different colors from and stuff. That would be this guy over here. And this is is the Slate Digital, I think it's the M1. This is a modeling microphone. And the reason I use this is because I can model different microphones and I can get different tones when I bring in a female artist that sings up in the soprano range or has like a really breathy tone. I'll use the 251 microphone emulation. When I want something really full and warm for singer songwriters, I'll use the 269 Neumann emulation. Uh... <laughs> And now I'm gonna take you through those. I'm gonna show you a chain that I've set up with the Slate Digital microphone and how, how I would use that in a session, right? So let's check this out. So going to Logic, I have uh, my latest song I'm gonna be releasing here soon. And hopefully you guys support it and you like it. If you don't, it's all good. I'm not gonna cry, <laughs> you know? I might cry a little bit, but whatever. F you guys. <laughs> All right, so here's my lead vocal here, and I just want to take you through this and share it with you for the verse here. And then I'll take you through the chain that I have for the Slate Digital microphone. And the first thing we're going to have here is the 251 
because this is a really breathy soprano. I'm doing like a falsetto here, right? So, right? So this is the 251. And then I have a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of the air band from this air EQ. All from Slate Digital and becoming kind of my go-tos for a lot of things for my records. Yeah, let's play it with everything and then I'll bypass everything and I'll break it down, okay? Here's a little uh, preview. Walking on the moon alone Just another episode Try and keep up with the jokes All our lives are metaphors all right, so you can hear that's like a very colored vocal. It sounds kind of in between modern and very classic, but the microphone, the, the Slate Digital goes in through the Apollo and let's take you through the very first part of the chain, 88 RS, right? And I have a little bit of compression here and I have a little bit of EQ on this. And the EQ is very, very minimal. As you can see, it just has a top shelf a little bit at, it looks like 5K up. Okay, so that's for the Slate Digital mic. And we're using the mic pre emulation on the 88 RS. And then there's a little bit of compression. And you can see the inputs down, which means we're probably compressing very light going in. And then the Poltec EQ P1A doing sort of the same thing as the other one, but we're not boosting as much top in. And we're doing about the same on the boost and cut on the 30 Hertz, but we're bringing the bandwidth tighter. And I don't know why I did that. I probably just was dialing it in as I sing and as I, as I play. Now that goes through the console and it gets printed into Logic. Pro through this chain, which would be the 251, which is nice and airy and breathy. And I'll A, B a couple different mics, some of my favorites in this. And then the air EQ giving a little bit of boost on air. I go to the Metatune, which has its own kind of tone, right? And it's on low latency mode. So it's like, so I can sing through it. And then the SSL EV2 channel from Waves, which is one of my favorite plugins, hands down of all time. And I push a little bit of this 4.6 on the mic. That's gonna give it some nice harmonics. It looks like that's it. I have the gate on, so it's gating when noise comes in, but it looks like the threshold and the gate isn't really kicking on at all, right? And then the 14, it looks like we have 13.5. We're doing a little bit of boost and 3.48 we're doing 1 db and we're widening out the q and then at 800 800 i find is a good area for the mid-range for the vocal to push forward and out of the speakers a lot of people sweep out the mid-range of their vocal and i think that's a big mistake we're pushing just a touch 0.7 of 130 with a bell so that's going to give me a little bit more oomph in the vocal and weight and then i have the c1 comp and let's see what this is doing see how much it's compressing walking on the moon alone just another just a really nice compressor, very clean, very smooth. I just love this compressor. I think it's really light on CPU as well and it holds things together. So we're not losing anything when I go up and walk it on the moon alone. You know, it's like holding all that up there so we don't lose any words. And then I have the Pro DS, of course, my favorite DSer of all time. And let's see how much this is DSing. Walk it on the moon alone. Just another episode. So you can see it's bringing those S's down so that the sibilance doesn't fly into the reverb and just get totally crazy. And then last but not least, we have the Valhalla Vintage Verb, you know, like on almost every record nowadays, let's be real. So the mix is at 22%, which is a lot for me. 3.39, smooth play. I love the pre-delay on this. I keep it like from 30 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds, depending on the tempo of the song. And then EQ, I always high cut around eight, seven, six, five. It really depends on how dark I want the vocal to sound. And I always low cut at, you know, around 300 to 200, somewhere around there. So at 590 Hertz, if I wanted to multiply that bass, which scales the reverb decay time for bass frequencies relative to the decay parameter, which is just basically scaling at times 1.5, two times, etc. But I just keep that at like one. It's not, I don't want more bass in my reverb. And then I have some parallel stuff going on here. A parallel compressor going to the UAD TubeTech CL1B MK2. This is an amazing compressor. I love it. It, it's so smooth. It's so buttery. You're going to find it on Justin Bieber records on vocals for like really smooth pop vocals, right? It's just like classic tube tech. And then we have the Pro Q3. And this, remember, is a parallel compressor. So it seems like it was building up quite a bit in the 300 to 7, 800 area here on the parallel. So I kind of choked that out and then I took down the tops, right? That's really, really important. Let's just hear that vocal, the parallel compressor by itself. Just another episode. Sell out all our old friends. Thickens out the vocal, makes it really, really warm without bringing in more sibilance, more top in, more boomy, you know, muddy, murky stuff. So that's that's a great way to do it. And then this last one, the studio rack, I have a widening chain here, which is something I use in 
every vocal ever. Like, I don't know when I haven't used this, but the chain is REQ4, which is just focusing on the mid range, right? And I'm ducking a little bit of the 500 because sometimes that builds up and this is going to be in the sides. And then we got the doubler two, which is going to push it out to the sides and we're turning down the center channel, right? So the sides can pop more. And then we have the S1 imager to go even wider on it. And this is just an amazing, like I'll kind of crank this up so you can really hear what it's doing. It's just widening the vocal and making more space for it in the middle. Walking on the moon all alone Just another episode And that's really it. That's the full chain. That's my parallel stuff. And that's what I'm recording with this Slate microphone. And the Slate microphone is like, I think I got it on sale for like 500 bucks. And then I bought the additional tube stuff here, right? There's like a additional pack with tube microphones. So if I go to mics, you can see there's Blackbird Studio, Classic Tubes. So the Classic Tube upgrade is well worth it. That's what I have here. And that's gonna give you the 47, the 800, the 251. And then it gives you these additional Additional ones like the FG67 MK2, the 47 MK2. I love the 269 on a singer songwriter, full body, like beautiful lower voice. That's so good. The mid range on that and the bottom is so good on that. And then I like the 800 on rap vocals. Female R&B vocals are really good for that. And then of course, like what you're hearing here is the 251, which is just really nice and silky on my voice and also a great mid range. But that's the whole deal. If you guys have any questions at all, drop them in the comments. I'm just here to show you what I do with my vocals, right? TLM 103 or the Slate Digital ML1 microphone. And these are the chains I use. This is what I use for my content. It's what I use for my records. It's what I use for other people's records. And I've never, ever had anyone say, man, your vocals don't sound good. <laughs> So I hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, share the show, drop a comment, show some love, and I'll see you guys next episode, which is Plug-In of the Week coming on Tuesday. Radium Mixing Series dropping every Thursday. So definitely subscribe if you want more game. Peace.